Hello, Tweak. So yeah, we got the last of the epic relics. This is the only one I didn't have for the past little while. So yeah, the only relic I don't have is Golden Spatula. So we'll be testing this one out today, and we'll be testing it out on Jax before we move on and replay some of our six-star champions that we kind of just got to six stars, and trying to think through their strengths and weaknesses and start working through our a tier list ranking. But yeah, this should be should be interesting. Hello, Awu. Hello, Tora. Yeah, I think Living Weapon will be a solid relic. I think it's definitely going to be a relic that is good for people that don't have that big of a relic collection because it's very broad. You can throw it on a lot of people. So if you're someone that is kind of more starting out and you get this as one of your first epic relics, could be really good as you could use this on a lot of different people. The one issue is I think if you're a player like me that has all of the re relics, there's normally better options for champions for doing specific builds. But I think it's going to be one that's still very good on people, but it's normally not going to be like the best option for most people. Hello, Rivi. How are you today? Me personally, I'm so sick I can't even go to work. Yay. And also playing Diablo 4. Nice. I'm doing doing all right. Having another another good morning. Sorry that you're sick. Hope Hopefully it's a sickness where bad enough, yeah, you can't go to work, but not making you too... Irritable is not the white, right word. Or just not making uncomfortable. I guess that'd be decent. <laughs> Hello, Dre. Also, yeah, I haven't played Diablo 4 in a bit. Probably not going to get the new expansion. And like, maybe if it goes on sale, like six months down the road or something, they have it like for 50% off. Then it's like, ah, I may, may I'll pick it up. Uh, Toast, have you seen the YouTube community polls from the LOR team? Yes. At least when I saw it, there was only like three of them. So if there was more than three, then no, I haven't seen them. But I saw the one for like, uh, what champ do you want to get upgraded to six stars? And that was like Nasus, Mordekaiser, and another one I didn't care about. Uh, then there was another one of what champions should we add? And that one was uh, leaning towards Nautilus, but Galli was also on there. And then I think there was a third poll, but I forget what that one was asking, to be honest. NASA is a Nautilus one. Yeah, that's how it was leaning when I uh, voted. A little sad. So proud of myself. I leveled a lot of champs previous in this patch, and next monthlies are going to get destroyed. Yeah, I look forward to seeing how fast monthlies can happen now that we have the animation speed. Hello, Long. How is Living Weapon? Um, We haven't tested it yet. All right, so we're going to go for Jax here, and we're going to test out this very general build. And yeah, I think Living Weapon is just going to be a good relic to throw on a lot of people, but normally they're going to have better options. Should be pretty good for Jax, though, since he's obviously using equipment. I don't think you need to use this on an equipment champion, but it is a little bit better. So this is just going to be giving him a lot of scaling. The Beast Within is hitting pretty much all of our units because they have the Weapon Master subtype, so they're all getting an additional 1-1 one, one and Overwhelm. That's going to be really nice. And then Black Shield just to try to protect our units. So it's a very simple build. It's not trying to do anything too fancy. Just protect our units, give them some extra stats, Overwhelm, Spell Shield, and then Jax is going to have a little bit more uh, scaling. Is Nico 6-star worth the grind? I don't have it, but from, from what I've heard, no. But I don't think that many people have the Nico six star. Yeah, a lot of people haven't really been that happy about it. Sad Orn and then the other Nautilus Galio and Unstoppable Force. Yeah. I don't know about a third one. I only saw two. Okay, there might have just been the two. Those are the only two I remember. I just thought that there was three of them. But yeah, I can't even remember what the third one would have been. <laughs> Makes for a lot better, but it's boring. Yeah. Truthfully, I don't know if I've used Jax outside of the monthly, so this will be an interesting watch. He used to be a very good champion. He's not really that impactful anymore since he's still a three-star. But back when there was only three-star champions, and like when he first came out, he was one of the best. So we'll grab him here. 
and I don't really feel like doing Lissandra or Swain with him or one of the Nightmares. I think we'll actually just go back and try to do uh, a Galio one. We haven't done Galio in a minute, not Galio, Aurelian Soul. Uh, let's see how this goes. For me, yes, her six star is worth it. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and grab a power here. Uh, extra draw is pretty good. We want to be aggressive early. Things will be solid. Hello, nuclear. Let's go for Sejuani. Trust nothing but your strength. The Nico hate continues. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's get rid of a couple of these. And we'll get rid of the Desert Duel. Yeah, some of these two cost champions are probably going to get pretty crazy when they get actually their constellation. So we, yeah, want to drop our Jax right away because he is going to get that scaling every round start. All right, so Hookmaster is pretty good. Uh, we already have the Overwhelm. Oh, yeah. Forgot to drop an ad before we got in, so we'll pause and wait because, yeah. Some people probably got stuck by the ad. Also, uh... Leg Dim 90. Thank you for the follow. Yeah, we are pausing. I normally try to drop ads before we go in the adventure so it doesn't happen during, but uh, I kind of got distracted this time. Oh, man. Yeah, I think Jax and Diana are both going to be insane once they get their constellation. Quite often, though, Jax kind of just feels like a slightly worse version of Diana. Like, he's still really strong, but yeah, she's better. Is it boring? Yes. Is it strong? No. Does it help her clear harder runs? Very much yes. <laughs> yeah, I think for... Well, she's actually, she's Runeterra. Yeah, I'm probably not going to get the Nico six star for a long time. Because I think she's Runeterra, which means I'm definitely choosing Evelyn and Aatrox before her. And probably by the time I'd have one for her, I'd probably have other people. All right, we paused. Apologies, I normally try to run ads beforehand. But yeah, we didn't do anything once those dropped. I think let's actually drop the Hookmaster. Nice, we got what we wanted. Overwhelm, or the... Scout. Um, sure, let's buff her up a little bit more. Let me change up my style. Who's next? Bring it on. All right, solid. GG. I'd love a six star bard. Yeah, that would be very cheesy. Uh, six star Evelyn worth over Nico. Personally, I am going to do that. If I. If I had a Rune Terra Nova Crystal, I would 100% give it to Aatrox or Evelyn. I would do that way over over Nico personally. I love the Weapon Master voice lines; they are pretty fun. All right, he's too expensive. I think let's just go for Crumbling Sands. Kind of the best here. Oh look, Bard. Uh, Yasuo four cost. Yona would be a little bit cheaper. Custard Palm, still expensive. I do kind of like Bard, and his level up should synergize pretty well with Jax. So sure, I think let's actually grab this here. Let's see, Boctopus. Let's go for the middle, that way we can branch out if there's a champion item. Uh, let's avoid Ash, she's always annoying, so let's go for Zoe. All right, let's get rid of Cosmic. And yeah, that's good. It's actually not bad that they're starting with the attack token. Because it lets us get a little bit more time to develop our board. Also, yeah, the passive buffs of just helping all your units be a little bit stronger, having that overwhelm and the spell shield so they can't just immediately get killed is pretty nice. All right, they didn't get their stun, which is good. Upcycled rake, not bad. 
So this unit doesn't have the barrier, which means they're a little bit worse with that scout. So yeah, they'll probably... Well, they'll scale up a little bit here. Yeah, still not quite enough. Alright, let's go ahead and attack like this. And yeah, not quite ending. But pretty good. It is nice with this build that you don't have to worry about your jacks getting recalled or anything like that. And also a lot of the upgrades for him. It's just very passive. I think if you're wanting a chill, simple build that just kind of works, this is actually pretty good. <laughs> GG. It seems we aren't getting another Targon Constellation anytime soon. Um, I mean, maybe December. I would say maybe, because after Arcane, I'm hoping that they take a big break from P and Z champs and also just take a step back from like Noxus, because we already have three Noxus champions and we're going to be getting one more with Mbessa. So hopefully they take a step back there. And they have another champion teased uh, for the next patch. So we're potentially getting three champions. I would guess that it's probably like Victor. But yeah, hopefully, hopefully in December, we're not going to get another one. Is the Morgana Relic a spell shield everywhere? Uh, all your cards get spell shield. Yes, it's not like the effect where it's permanent spell shield, so it can get broken. Uh, I think let's go for the Entrancing Lure. That'd be decent. What region is Warwick? I would assume that Warwick is going to be uh, P and Z. That's kind of the only thing that makes sense for him. I don't think they even remember remember Targon exists. Uh, do you think they should give Aesil a proper six-star constellation, or would that be excessive? I don't think so. I think Aesil is fine where he is. Like, he's... Yeah, he's fine. I don't think we need a six-star all right, let's go for item chest. I would prefer that they give six stars to champions that actually need it. So them upgrading champion like Nasus is good. Upgrading like Mordekaiser, just other lower performing champions and bringing them back up so they can be more competitive. I think making a champion that's already super broken, even more broken. I don't think it's necessary. Uh, let's. All right. So these are both good, but this would give us two units. I think we will actually go for the giant spell just because he is very weak getting him to be a little bit stronger couldn't be bad uh hippo pd <laughs> thank you for the the prime appreciate it i know you're tied in p and z but my god is jana six stars my dream yeah i think jana six stars would be really fun as well like i like a lot of the p and z champs but they need to give us other regions because yeah, there's tons of people that are stuck with multiple Targon Crystals, Shurima, Bilgewater especially. And we just need to flush out some of these, or flesh out some of the other regions. Uh, spells Chest or Gold Chest? I think let's go for the Spells Chest. Let's go up against Tom Kench. It is my mouth into which all travels in. Targon is struggling? Yes. Yeah, it is. I think let's get rid of the Cosmic Binding and get rid of the Combat Cook. And even the Entrancing Lure. We want to be sure we can get our Jax. Nice. Oh, so he's having three mana. I also think this build, especially the Living Weapon, works really well with Jax because he also scales up when he attacks. So you just get even more scaling. Alright, so we could go for Bard. We'd probably be able to get him to level. Uh, they have three mana, so they can't play their Tom Kench. Uh, sure, we can... 
I think improvise our own unit. Alright, well. <laughs> GG. And you know what? Also for me. Yeah, Jax does scale up pretty crazy right here. Yeah, Hecarim would be very fun to see. I would like Panth or Taric for Targon. Those are some of the ones I'm a little bit less excited about because I feel like both Pantheon and Taric are all gonna be about self-targeting or targeting allies and we already have a good amount of decks and champions that already fulfill that same play style so they still could do pantheon or Taric, but they would definitely have to try to spice things up i would be more interested in kind of some more unique champions like uh i think malphite could be could be pretty fun all right so two cost that could be nice if we draw it initially, it would be bad because we wouldn't be able to go for this over our uh, Jax. But I think it still could be really good. All right, let's go for spells. I do like Bursting Backpack. It's fun. And the fact that this has Champion uh, Spell or Champion Horn on it is good. All right, let's go for the shop. Just having quick attack is actually slightly bad because we kind of want this to die when we attack. Uh, I think we'll pass. I think we will actually get this. It could be good specifically for our bird or bard or beard. <laughs> Whatever this bird. I'm going to go with bird. Because here we could have this challenge whatever unit so we could actually die and we get a rally. So that could be good. Uh, draw two grand bleeding. Some of these are okay units. I think we'll buy one copy of this because it's already in our decks. So we're just getting the item on it essentially, and I think I think we're fine. Uh, let's go for Poppy. Huh? You want me? Well, okay. Also, who'd you vote for in the poll? Uh, I voted for Galio, and I voted for Mordekaiser, and they're both losing, which is sad. Uh, let's get rid of both of these. Mordekaiser, yeah, would be so much fun. All right, so we don't have our Jax, so we will actually drop our Ranger Knight. We'll drop our Bursting Backpack next round, and then grab our Jax. All right, so some solid damage down. And yeah, I like that this build isn't just running out of steam turn one. Sometimes you can have an issue with some of the builds you go for with Jax, where you're all about ending turn one, and then if you don't end, it's like, well, <laughs> we tried. Uh, I think let's actually go for Bird, because if we could have him die, yeah, dropping him, they now don't want to attack. They could have had a pretty good attack, but now they know that we're going to rally and be able to end. So it's a good way to keep them from attacking, to be honest. Another scout, not bad. Alright, I think let's open attack. We can get our rally and then do our scout attack if we want, but we're really just going to end right here. And you know what? Also for me. To us. Nice, GG. Uh, I think the vote was on the Legends of Runeterra YouTube channel. So, like, their, their official one, because the developers were doing it. Uh, Power Riff would make our jacks free. We don't have anything tied to specific costs. So, I think this should just be a positive. Yeah, I think we should be good. Let's go ahead and grab that. When you target an ally with a single target spell, copy it on your weakest. We do have some single target spells. 
like entrancing lure and the uh, catch. So it's okay. When an ally survives damage, grant it 1 1. Not terrible. I think we'll, we'll also go for share of the bounty. We could potentially build around this. All right, so crimson. I think we'll potentially go for the spells chest. Caitlyn can be a little rough, but let's try to go for it. I'm on the case. No siren on the votes. It's rigged. No, it's just that Sion is one that they're definitely going to do, and so they don't need the community's help deciding that. They're just definitely doing Sion. He's totally coming in, like, the patch in December, 100% Sion. If I say it enough, maybe it'll come true. Sion would go crazy with Jinx Relic. The one issue is if there is Sion, then... Um, that means it's another Noxus champion. All right, so could drop our beard bird, but I think let's go for the castaway. Hey, Cap, how's the ship holding up? Still full of holes after you taunted that sea monster, you dope. All right, so solid. Bottom the train. All right, let's drop. Our bird. Need a weapon. So, yep, he will die. He'll get some solid damage off, but we'll get a rally and we'll be able to end the game. Any takers? Um, sure, we can you you. drop Force. this here. Oh, I guess the draw is actually not good for us. As they say, it's perfect. <laughs> I uh, didn't think about the fact of them leveling. <laughs> Not the greatest. Still, all good. Years of battle and I'm just up. Uh, GG. Uh, I want to point out it's very important to remember those polls were at least uh, 2025, if not January. So we know they're going to chill out on PNZ after Arcane since Not and Bilge Nasus uh, Shirima. Yeah, they. They definitely know it's an issue that we have too many of the same regions. Like, the developers aren't blind or dumb. <laughs> they know it's a problem. I just think they're kind of in a tough spot because they know they need to build out all the champions for Arcane, and most of Arcane is PNZ. That's going to be too expensive. So let's do Pokestick. Okay, gives us more draw. That could be okay. Uh, Fiora, that could be interesting. Yeah, let's try to go for it. Let's do one reroll here. So when drawn, I cost one less. Let's have other cost reduction. This could buff up a card or a unit to be pretty good since we have our single target spells go off twice. So that's not terrible. But I think we'll go for the Cosmic Binding. This going down to a 2 cost and having a stun can be pretty good, especially against, like, Fiora. A little bit of control is not bad, so I think we'll grab that. And yeah, let's go here. I would cut down the opposition. My first ASOL run was with Morgana with seven different perfected mana flow encounters. Crazy. This is okay. I think we'll get rid of the Marauder. And one of the castaways. We still want to increase our odds of getting Jax, but... Having some cards we can play early is not bad. All right, excellent. Sword, staff, fish, nothing speaking to me. All right, so we could go for catch, but no, I think we'll go for castaway still. Hey, Captain, how's the ship holding up? Still full of holes after you taunted that sea monster, you dolt. All right, so they'll probably be able to survive here. We're actually going to use this early just because it will help contribu contribute towards Jack's level up. And then, yeah, he's not going to die. Okay, solid. Uh, GG. I also like that with the spell shield and overwhelm, there's not really much they can do. Also, Beast Within is making our Poros even bigger as well. Uh, they said Warwick and Mel's mom are coming and a secret champ from Arcane. Who do you think the secret one's going to be? 
I mean, I would think that Victor has a very high likelihood. So maybe that's potentially singed, or it's just going to be a completely random champion that they happen to pull into the show. So if they're not taking someone from the existing cast and someone that's going to show up during the show, yeah, then it could be someone just super random. I doubt that they're going to do Azir. I don't think Azir is just going to show up in Piltover. Victor, LeBlanc, Silco, or Janna. I think all of those would be cool. I kind of hope that would happen. I do think, yeah, Silco is probably Copium, but... Yeah, I think Silco is an awesome character, so I wouldn't mind. Uh, combat Cook, Insider Knowledge. Extra Draw is nice, but I think we're okay. Let's go for Combat Cook. What do you mean? Clearly the revived Emperor some business in PNZ? Maybe. I wouldn't be surprised if they did a whole show on Shirima and was really about the Ascended. It'd be funny if Azir showed up, but I feel like it'd be pretty out of place with everyone else. Uh, Spellburn. We don't play that many spells, but a little bit, I suppose. We have a lot of gold, but we don't have that many rerolls left. I think we'll be fine. And I think let's go for the champion item. Ezreal with unyielding. Quest accepted. Wait, where are we going? We're getting Warwick, uh, Ambessa, and a third more sinister thing. Did they say it's sinister? I just thought they said it was secret. All right, let's do a pretty much a full mulligan here. Uh, I think we'll drop our defector first. That way they potentially blow, yeah, spells on it and not our jacks. Yeah, the spell shield is nice, but against some champions, it's just pretty rough. But yeah, Jax is scaling so much because he has his effect that's going off at scaling. And then we also have uh, the living weapon as well. We could stun him, but I think let's just build out our board. They can do some chip damage to us. It doesn't really matter. You taunted that sea monster, you dolt. Um, yeah, I think... I think we're fine. Nailed it. And I think... Uh, I was going to say we won't bother doing our scout attack. But they do have unyielding, which can be a bit of an issue. So we could drop bard. And let's try to go for a scout attack here. Okay, that's not terrible. Suppose we'll drop hard. Man, they still haven't dropped any spells. That is surprising. Uh, yeah, we'll just go ahead and attack like this. And you know what? Also, Ergot counts as sinister. Urgot would be pretty crazy. Although I think they changed his lore. Like, Urgot used to be PNZ, but didn't they change it so now he's... Is he Noxus now? I actually kind of don't... Is he still PNZ? Or Zon? I know he used to be originally, but I don't know with his rework if he's still Zon. Kind of thought they maybe moved him to... Uh, Noxus, but I think I also might be confusing him with the fact that they revive Scion. He's from Noxus, but he's in Zon. Okay. Good to know. Uh, I think we'll, we can just chill, honestly. Uh, I guess we'll use some small amount of damage here.
Just go for some bursting backpacks. Does do some damage on them. All right, looks good. Uh, Jubilin, thank you for the subscribe. Appreciate it. Uh, Living Weapon is just in the Golden Reliquaries. This isn't one you have to buy. I don't think any of the relics, unless they're like, the only ones you buy, I think, are champ specific as far as buying with real money. All right, let's just attack and GG. Jax, yeah, it does scale just like crazy. Just OTK'd if you are a mid boss on the ASL run. Nice. In the trailer, there are hints LeBlanc is coming and she's definitely sinister. I mean, yeah, LeBlanc, it would make sense for her to be everywhere. So I could definitely see LeBlanc. Uh, let's go for more Castaway. The other two are a little bit too expensive for us. Let's see what we can get here. Another power is not going to help. Shadow Totem. I think it's still kind of annoying with his auto equip. Like, I think it's fine. I think we'll actually go for Radiant Plate Armor. Since we have the cost reduction, getting a bunch of extra stats would be nice. Uh, let's cut a card. I think let's actually get rid of the Merciless Hunter. And let's go for Yasuo. Ooh, Yasuo is perfecting mana flow. It's a good thing we have Spell Shield. LeBlanc needs to leave her alt accounts. It's getting annoyed. Her being the first to go. Urgot is probably a Noxian turned Cambaron. Probably after the whole Civil War, he could be one of the main bosses after Caitlyn becomes the full on sheriff. Okay. I guess, yeah, they could maybe make him dual region if they wanted. <laughs> uh, let's give it a pokey stick. And the castaway. I think we'll actually hold on to Cosmic Binding. Nice, our Jax still is zero cost. I guess, yeah, we do have the extra game start draw two. So yeah, even with the extra stats, Jax is still zero. I think let's open with the defector. All right, so they are out of mana. That is pretty nice. This unit will probably just die, but sometimes they don't block scouts, so let's try it. All right, solid. All right, so some good damage down. We don't want any trouble. I think let's actually drop a Cosmic Binding to kill him and stun that. They might drop another Yasuo immediately, but not that big of a deal, because then they're having to use up some of their Yasuo so they can't use him as stuns. All right, so they, oh, it's a little, it's a little risky because if we don't attack immediately, then they can potentially use some of their effects like their Yone or spells like that. If we do attack right away though, then it also gonna be problems. I think we'll risk it. We'll try to try to attack. And you know what? We still have spell shield, so they'll have to get through twice. Okay, GG. Yeah, we had Spell Shield, but I was worried that they were going to drop multiple spells to be able to stun us, because they could have with that amount of mana. Uh, the Shadow that said Arcane is Awakening. Headlines under the eyes that LeBlanc is known for, and she's known to be everywhere. So it makes sense that she's in the story, whole time disguised as someone. I mean, yeah, LeBlanc, her showing up anywhere is like, okay, that makes sense. Uh, Vampiric Scepter won't matter. Sure, we can just grab Brash. Uh, let's get a power here. Arm to the teeth. Oof, all of these are pretty good. Extra mana is nice, but yeah, I think we'll go for Arm to the Teeth. Honestly, this is probably going to be Jack's four star. <laughs> and yeah, we have enough gold. Let's go for Fizz. Let's go paddling. Is it just me or does the game on one time speed feel generally on slow mo? Like, not going from four times to one times, but it just feels a lot slower than I remember it. Yeah, I think I'm going to have that issue. 
because I've been playing on two times speed and it now just feels like one time speed. So if I go back, it's probably going to be awful. Uh, let's get rid of... Yeah, I think just that one. That power choice always gives three good choices or three bad choices. Uh, we'll go ahead and drop our jacks. All right, so we won't be able to block. Oh, well. One time speeder things going backwards, pretty much. All right, let's get our scout attack off. And then <laughs> GG. Oh, <laughs> uh, hello, jump. Guess you'll have to watch the VOD potentially. All right, also looks like uh, add drops. So we'll just pause and uh, hold off while we wait for that to go through. Probably just grab the pokey stick, to be honest. Although one cost capture is not terrible. Yeah, that could be good for Aurelian Soul. Yeah, so far I'm really, really liking this build. There's other builds with Jax we can really try to just be ending turn one. But I like how this one puts a bunch of damage forward. But even if you don't end, you're still fine. All your units having Overwhelm, Spell Shield, and an additional 1-1 one, one is really good. And then Jax himself just scales like crazy. Uh, makes me think Box? Bow X, Brow X, uh, 69. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. All right, just about 20 <laughs> seconds. Oh. The song I'm Still Standing by Elton John started playing. It reminded me of you in some weird process of multiple things overlapping leading to LOR. Interesting. All right, I think we'll actually grab the Frozen Thrall. This could be good to capture and get rid of, like, Aurelian Soul, Aatrox, Diego, if they drop any of those. A uh, home turf extra draw. Not terrible. We'll probably be overdrawing, but yeah, not bad. Someone created Ally Granted 2 2. This would have been great if we went for the Husks. I think we'll still probably grab it. It is solid. We are making a lot of Poros with some of our effects. Trancing Lure can go off. Our catch is really good. Yeah, I think we'll still go for it. And let's buy, again, two of these. I always get two with Home Turf just because I don't want to accidentally draw one and then have that in my hand and the Home Turf not go off. I think let's do one reroll here. We have a lot of gold. Okay, we can get Bursting Backpack. I think we'll actually get a couple of these because for one, it's going to create a champion that's going to count as created units. So that's going to go well with the power we just bought. Also, it has champion draw on it, which is really good. Tri-Beam isn't terrible. Sure, we'll use our last reroll. See if there's something crazy here. Sprayfin, Cultist, Spirits, Refuge. This going down to a two cost isn't terrible, but we're normally not spending mana on equipping our allies. That's okay, but I think I think we're fine. Let's go for Victor. I am but the first of many. Recently leveled my Jace. Uh, yeah, Jace is pretty great. I really hope to get him to six stars. I need to level my Kate Heimer. Oh, goodness. And Pike to 30 and putting it off, even though I have the pearls. Uh, let's get rid of this. And yeah, that could be fine. I 
I'm gonna wait for Warwick. Yeah, that's the thing. I'm probably gonna get Warwick over over Jace. Uh, I think we'll still drop Jax right away. And I think let's actually drop double bursting backpack. Just to get some more champions on the board that should be decently strong. Alright, pretty good. Nice. Alright. 15 or 16, 12 jacks, turn two. Alright, I think let's just drop another one. If they attack, we should be able to block, shouldn't really be an issue. And you know, let's just go for Pokey Stick. And we just need to play one more spell, and then we win. Alright. Uh, GG. Not sure if I'm going to use my Nova Crystal on Jace just yet. I don't know if it's going to be worth it over Warwick. Yeah, if I had a Nova Crystal, I would probably wait for Warwick. I think Warwick's probably going to be cooler. Like, I think Jace's six star is awesome, but I think it'd be nice. Hello, Kiro. Welcome. Uh, sad part is my favorite champion is Zahn. I wonder how long it's going to be until I see him. Yeah. Uh, let's go for Combat Cook. That'll be solid. All right, let's go for a Tridomir. I think even the game knows I don't like Jace. Haven't gotten any Jace shard since his constellation. Uh, let's get rid of the Cosmic Binding. Like having the catch and holding on to a Frozen Thrall is not bad. Uh, let's go for the... Oh, we could go for the Defector. But... Catch is actually pretty good for us. Because... It goes off twice, it gives us damage on the Nexus, it summons multiple units that are pretty strong. So they'll be able to slightly block us. Yeah, I think we'll drop this just to get rid of their blocker. So we'll be really close to ending. I think we'll drop a pokey stick next round and try to end. All right, we'll have to get a little bit lucky with what we get. All right, didn't get enough, sadly. Love the attitude. We see through all. Let me change up my style. All right, GG. And thank you, Spell Shield. Yeah, 50 was the old max for Constellation. Uh, 30 was the like original max way back in the day, I think. And then they upped it to 40, and then I think 50. And yeah, now it's like 80, I believe. Which is kind of crazy. What's your favorite kind of chips and soda pop? I really like vanilla Coke. That'd probably be, in general, my favorite. And then as far as chips, I like the specifically Miss Vicky's Sour Cream and Onion. Uh, getting more of the Defector. Nice. And Aurelian Soul. Naturally. All right. Some of these are solid, but I think... Yeah, I think we'll actually get rid of the Combat Cook. While it is good, there's some other effects we would like to get. All right, so we do not get the attack token, so we really just need to focus on developing. My heroic last dance never seemed to stick. 
All right, set. That's not the worst possible option they could get. Uh, probably still going to go for Bursting Backpack, but I think we'll drop a Castaway. Attack, refill one spell mana. That could actually be pretty nice. Hey, Cap, how's the ship Well, that's not the greatest. Uh, will the scout actually matter here? I mean, not if they block, to be honest. But sometimes they don't block scout, so this unit will probably die, but we'll try to attack and see what they do. Okay, they didn't do anything. Not too bad. All right, so we can attack like this, kill their mind splitter. And actually kill their set as well. Alright, nice. I'm just up. <laughs> that spell shield is so nice for a Rellion Soul. Uh, we can... Yeah, drop the combat reel here. Looks good. Alright, solid. The strategic Viego pull. Good. Alright, so we didn't get our one effect for getting the landmark. We potentially can keep dropping Jax because he's relatively cheap. Yeah, I think let's... Go for it. Alright, so Jax will die. We're going to have another copy of him we can play later, but the biggest thing is just killing their Viego, because otherwise we're going to have a very bad time. The thing is, our, our equipment keeps breaking, which is bad. All right, so we'll try to get our a scout attack in. Again, they might block. Oh, GG. Okay. Uh, got hidden tome from the uh, golden reliquary. I can never get anything good. I mean, I like hidden tome. I think hidden tome's fun. All right, I think that was a lot of fun. I think Jax is potentially the best person for living weapon. It just synergizes so well with his power where he's already wanting to attack to get more stats from his third star power. And then I really like this build overall. You're buffing up your whole board. You're giving pretty much all of them 1-1 one, one from the Beast Within, Overwhelm, Spell Shield, and then Jax is also just getting really good scaling. Very simple build. You don't really have to try to do anything crazy like sometimes with the like gale force builds you could go with or like crown guard you have a very specific break point break points you're going for but i think this is just really nice and solid and none of these are relics that you have to buy with real money which is pretty nice i do think the beast within or not the beast within but the living weapon is going to be one of those relics that's really good if you get this when you don't have a lot of other epic relics i think this is going to be a good general relic you can just throw on on almost everyone and have it be solid now i think for most champions there's going to be better options so if you're someone that has a pretty much complete collection of all the different relics you probably can make better builds that aren't going to utilize this but i think for most champions especially ones that are like three cost or less throwing this on just for getting some scaling would actually be pretty good Rage Blade, but epic, pretty much. All right, that was, yeah, pretty good. The Beast Within could replace with Troll Crown Guard. Uh, yeah, you can if you, you need it. For some champions, like Samira, the difference is very negligible. For Jax, the Beast Within is a bit better, just because most of your units are getting the extra 1-1. 
And since Jack's units are very small to start out, most of them, getting the extra stats on them is actually pretty impactful. So Beast Within is definitely a good upgrade, but if you don't have it, then yeah, going for Troll King's Crown isn't too bad. Discovered I can re-roll the Voidling Shell's keywords by recalling. Hmm. That's fun. Alright, so what we're going to be doing over today and honestly the next couple days is we're going to be testing some of the six star champions a little bit more, especially some of the champions I just got to six stars. And we're really going to be trying to evaluate them and really see where we want to put them on the tier list. So some champions specifically, like, we're not going to go for Swain, we're not going to go for Viego, because for one, we've played them a bunch, we have a really good handle on them, and we know they're both going to be, like, S tier. But some of the, and, like, probably the same with Jinx, we've played Jinx a bunch, but some champions that we haven't played as much, especially just got, so, like, Talia, Vayne, Volibear, Darius, uh, maybe a little bit more Ari, but we've played her a good amount, uh, potentially Caitlyn, I want to test her more with the Fiddlesticks Relic. I think it's really, really good, but it can freeze your game a ton. So I might just have to do that one off stream because otherwise I'm just constantly closing out of the game. Uh, Lilia, Gwen, probably not Fiddlesticks because we've already played him a bunch. Maybe we might. Uh, probably won't do Misfortune. We'll probably do Pike. Maybe do Vex. But yeah, we're just going to be testing out and evaluating a bunch of the champions and trying to work on the tier list. So we're probably going to do... Yeah, I played played Volibear a good amount. Uh, we're probably going to be trying to evaluate them a lot more and then kind of finishing off with putting them in the tier list. Now, that is going to be a very temporary placement, and we'll probably do a whole stream where we actually place everyone, but kind of evaluating where we think that they're probably going to want to go. So yeah, we're going to start with Volibear today, kind of because he's just my favorite. Five hundred one fragments already. Yeah, I got, got a lot pretty fast. Is there any other Path of Champion YouTuber that showcases six star other than Toast and Jinx nothing wrong and Sunny, I guess? Not that I'm aware of. You have so much stuff. Yes. Yes, I do. Uh, question, is Darius 6-star really necessary? That is something we will evaluate, because, yeah, we played Darius 6-star before. We played, like, one match with it, and... Yeah, it didn't really ever come into factor. Like, we won because of his other star powers. The extra mana from the 5-star, the 3- uh, and 2-star especially, the stun was really good. When we really started winning... It wasn't because of the six star. So we will have to evaluate that more, and he's probably going to be pretty low. You plan on doing a update video on best champs per region. Now the champs can be upgraded to six stars. Yeah, that probably would be solid. But I honestly would probably have to split that video into two parts where it's like best champions still at three stars because there's a lot of people that aren't going to have six stars. And then another one for people that actually have six stars. You're the only person I've seen with a higher star count than me. Uh, I know that there are some people that wail out harder, like normally Dre, that I think are higher up. But I was able to get a ton last time, because clearing the entire Fiddlesticks adventure, gained all of the gold vessels from there. Just doing a lot of the adventures they added in the last patch that I didn't do. And then I did buy the star crystal bundles and got a bunch from that all right so we're gonna grab volibear i think we'll go into the five star uh viego adventure and i think this is in general volibear's best build star forge is fantastic uh disciple really good and then found fortune also very solid then, yeah, for his constellation, we have everything but the gemstones. So he's fully six stars. All the great things, especially, you know, in my sights. So good. It can sometimes, sometimes it helps. The Nexus Health and Regen is really nice. 
Uh, the Star of Legends is also really good, being able to get more support champions to hit Titanic. Uh, Prophet and Shadow Totem, also solid. Uh, Star of Discovery, this is actually pretty nice, making a lot of your units very hard to kill. And I actually have been enjoying the Tribe List, getting him on the board early, letting him block. A lot of these upgrades have actually been coming together. I've been pretty impressed with Six Star Bully Bear, but let's go showcase him. Uh, Shogo, thank you for the, the subscribe. Appreciate it. And let's go over to the Nightmares. Uh, his Six Star, if you don't know, when you summon a Titanic ally, grant it 2-2 for each stack of Sigil of the Storm. Now, this is actually really good because this is a summon effect, but Sigil of the Storm gets destroyed when, by a play effect. So if you have any ways to keep summoning your units, but not technically playing them, they can keep getting the extra stacks of the Sigils, which is pretty nice. The fact that this is a summon effect is pretty massive. And the extra stats, while it wasn't really needed when Constellations first came out, now that we actually have the weekly Nightmares, and they're adding more Nightmares into the game, it is actually pretty important. So yeah, let's go ahead and load into uh, Viego here. Jace is so painful without the upgrades. I tried leveling him and suffered. <laughs> One plane to six cost, deal 10 to random enemies Nexus. Yeah, that's the Jace six star. J4 is great if you get the Titan Axe upgrade. Yeah, there's a lot of champions, especially ones that cost like five mana, that if you can get the extra stats, it's really good. All right, let's go ahead and go for a power here. Allied buffs are permanent. I don't think we do that very often. And then, yeah, I don't think any of these are going to be that great for us. Arm to the teeth, also not something we can really use. Quick draw isn't bad, but normally this is something that's good to get as like an additional power later on. Not necessarily something we want to open with, I think. So I think let's try one more. Sorcery is nice. We do have a decent amount of spells. Easy Prey is not bad to get two extra cost reductions for our Bully Bear. So Easy Prey is also good, but I think Sorcery is going to have more of an impact. And let's go for Spiderwing. All right, Invocation. Yeah, this is okay. We got three draw cards. We have a Titanic card. All right, I think let's immediately drop a tribe list. And like often, this is kind of one of the worst cards for Volley Bear. But since you're normally dropping it with sigils, it actually starts feeling way better. Because it actually gets some amount of stats, which can be which can be nice. Uh yeah, we can grab this here. And so we can actually utilize the challenger here. So that'll be good. And yeah, the regen actually kicks in to be pretty solid. Alright, they might attack, but let's try to go for profit. Yeah, that's not too surprising. Uh, let's actually drop that one there and this one here. Yeah, the fearsome. Probably should have dropped our volley bear immediately, but we we're hoping we could build that a little bit more. Uh, we will kill our tribe list, but that's honestly fine. Alright, let's go for tribe list. We could kill our own units with the avalanche, but we're kind of out of titanic units, so we maybe want to keep our units alive. But yeah, units just get so big, it's awesome. Alright, GG.
Thick volley, yes. I uh, just found out recently that you can summon multiple Jarvins at once if you have the mana for it. Pretty funny interaction. That is interesting. Yeah, I guess you normally just don't have mana for it, but that would be kind of crazy. Uh, let's, yeah, grab this here. Cheaper Titanic units, always nice. Yeah, six cost Titanic is pretty good. It's great when you get something like five cost or less. All right, so Anivia not quite hitting uh, the Titanic. Maokai actually hitting Titanic. That is pretty good. This is kind of the thing you like, getting multiple stat items. Honestly, for Volibear, getting the thing, the upgrade in your constellation so support champs get an extra upgrade would probably be good because then you can get cheaper units that can hit harder. Yeah, I think we'll probably go for Maokai. A four cost Titanic is decent. Could potentially get some saplings going. That could be pretty good. The tossing is a little annoying, but in general, I think this will be solid. Yeah. All right, champion item. I think we'll probably go there, although shop could be good as well. Either way, I think let's go for the Mist Wraith. Jarvan doing Avengers Assemble just multiples of himself. How far? How is it fair that I got Aesil, that Aesil got level up power as well in the run? I mean, most power that Aesil gets is kind of annoying. Let's get rid of Toad, and actually we can get rid of the Bjerg. Uh, Jace is not bad, you just have to figure out how to play, play him. No Season Desist on your Voli. Feels very good with Star Forge and Disciple of Shadows. You don't need Beast Within for Overwhelm. I tried it, and it's not bad, but... Yeah, I do like the Found Fortune. I think let's drop this here. We kind of want them to play something for our Maokai to get Strike off. Alright, nice. Maokai would also be another very interesting champ to get. But yeah, we don't have that many cards, so... <laughs> Maokai is not the best there. We once again could drop the Prophet. They don't have the Overwhelm or the Fearsome. So I think we will. Uh, yeah, we can... Suppose Frostbite that one, so it's the one that's going to get hit. Go for the Drake. This is the thing I love with Volibear, is you drop him, and then you start chaining other Titanic units. And this is one thing to always be careful of with your Found Fortune. This one is going to get reduced down. You're going to draw a card that costs zero. Make sure you're not playing them with your sigils. Try to play a different card with sigils. So here we're going to go for the other Chemtech Drake, because that one wasn't zero. And then we can drop this one for zero as well. And so we just have this massive board of Titanic units. Oh, GG. Hello, Hexstar. Still holding out for Fiora or Rise, because I appreciate all win cons. It'll probably happen eventually, but I don't know. Don't really think it's going to happen in the next little while. Hopefully it happens soon, though. I think we'll go for Scar Mother. Again, not the largest stat line, but it's Titanic. It's pretty cheap. It gives us more draw. That can be solid. And getting a power... Or getting a champion item. I think we'll actually try to go for a power here. 
<laughs> Megatee is pretty good. They both get strikes off. Uh, that's not really going to help us. That will help us. And yes, get Megatee, because this will get two strikes off, which will be pretty great. We have something close to that in our deck. Oh, Undergrowth. Yeah, a little bit different. I don't want to get more toss. So while Stormcalling is nice, I mean, we don't, can't even spend it. <laughs> get that anyways. Uh, let's leave here. And let's go ahead and load into Remitter. Triple Stalker's Fiora. You're not playing properly. Fiora is also something that they're probably changing her uh, card. So this is actually something I asked in an interview being like, hey, are you going to add these alternate win con champions into the game? And they said... Yes, they just have to make sure it works well. And then for some champions like Fiora, it's probably not going to be you win the game. It's probably like if you level, you do like 20 damage to the enemy Nexus or something like that. Uh, so they're probably just going to have it be a different card. All right, add also drops. We'll just hold off and pause. The only champ that I think can't be added in their current form is Katarina. Katarina would be pretty crazy. But I mean, we have crazy champions. Like, we have Aurelian Soul that they literally made to be pretty much as broken as possible, so... Having some champions that are just really strong isn't necessarily a problem. Drinking tea? Yeah, actually I actually have my tea I haven't touched quite yet. Maybe Fiora could strike the Nexus when she kills a unit or something like that. Yeah, that'd be interesting. So they will probably add some of those alternative win con champions, but probably not going to be in the same way as they are in PvP. All right, everyone should be back. Let's stick with these three and let's get rid of the undergrowth. Yeah, so far I've really been liking Volibear at his six stars. I do think he is quite solid, but... I know those other champions just end the game so fast. All right, here, let's do a Flash Freeze on their Sacred Protector. Already leveled Lucian seems pretty crazy. Although he'd probably just die, to be honest. Uh, still, we can go for it. All right, so we could go for Lucian... Sure. Don't get in my way. In the War Mother's name. All right, so we can attack like this. We can drag this aside and just get some solid damage down. Then we also get another attack. Awesome. And then we can drop Rolly Bear. We will end up killing Lucian. But I think he kind of served his purpose. <laughs> Alright, I think we'll pass. This way we have some strikes we can get off next match. I'm now a subscribe. Not sure why a thing didn't pop up. Yeah, that is weird. But thank you, Rivi. Appreciate it. Sometimes it can be a little delayed, so it might pop up in a couple minutes. It's a little weird. The six-star Volley went up in value after so many Nightmares were added. Yes, before it was just a win more power, but now it's actually good. All right, let's... I think go for... Uh, this would give us some more draw. So yeah, we'll drop this one first, and then we'll drop our Mega T. Our Mega T is zero, so that's why we're not playing it right now. Although I guess with the sapling, 
it'll be a little bit of an issue. I guess let's go for this, actually, just to make room. <laughs> yeah, having the regen, a lot of your bigger units, is actually really nice. Oh, GG. Yeah, I'm thinking Volibear is probably going to be a pretty solid mid-tier champion, because I think he is very strong. You can end a lot of games. You have good control. You have really, really good removal. And I think he's going to be solid. I think the biggest downside for Volibear is there's going to be other champions that are just able to end like... Oh, goodness, excuse me. That can end like turn one, like a Gwen or something like that. Or champions like Swain that have more control and more removal. Or the same with like Viega with all the stuff he can do. So I think Volibear is going to be up there. Or I think it's really going to be in the mid tier. I don't think it's going to be nearly as low as some people are thinking. I'll go for Crown Guard just for a one cost rally. <laughs> like that's pretty good. Alright, we don't have a lot of gold. And the power, like, if we get the lowest tier power, we could actually get one. I think we'll just potentially cut a card. Although we have two spots where we can cut cards. So we want to get rid of the undergrowth. We're probably never going to want to use that. Most of the cards, though, like, tribeless, I actually normally don't want to cut that as much anymore. Like, we do have a lot of big units we could end up cutting, but I kind of like them. I think let's actually just try to high roll for a decent power. That's kind of funny, actually. Yep, so one that we can't buy. A little bit sad. I guess we could also get rid of the Thorny Toad. I think we'll get one copy of this. Normally they fix it so you do actually get the stats. So she's not completely useless. And... Uh, yeah, let's get rid of Undergrowth. And let's go for Fiora. I would cut down the opposition. Yeah, I'll probably cut the Thorny Turret as well. Let's get rid of Unscarred, and... Yeah, this looks good. Alright, let's Frostbite her. Yeah, grab this here. And then get a couple strikes going, so she's gone. And then we can just attack and rally a couple times. Yeah, so we could drop Chemtech, but let's just drop Crown Guard. Alright, so we... Hmm. I think we'll actually hold the sapling back, and let's... Actually, just attack with Maokai. Alright, so we can drop our Volibear. Uh, I think we'll actually drop our Mega T because we're not going to be using... No one else is going to be able to use the Sigils. Drop our Crown Guard. And that is nice little OTK. GG. Uh, Crown Guard, Tiana Crown Guard is their aunt, I believe. Power Rift is nice. Overwhelm is solid. Savage Shield. Actually, honestly, getting more stats for Maokai isn't terrible. I think we'll go for the Power Rift for our Volibear. Both Mega T's get buffs because of the summon wording on 6-star. Yes, it is really, really good. Inheritance isn't bad. This can give us more Titanic units, so that's actually not terrible. And we are having units die. So, sure. More Titanics. Sounds good. 
Uh, let's go ahead and cut another card. So Evershade Stalker. Yeah, Ephemeral summons first, then the card comes into play, consuming the sigils. Yeah, I... The actual plane of the Volibear 6-star, the functionality and how it's been working is actually a lot better than I was expecting. It plays really well. Let's get rid of the Reaver, get rid of one of the Mega Tees. Alright, Babbling Bjerg would give us more draw, but it probably wouldn't be enough. Let's go for Prophet here. Let's attack like this. Let's drop our Avalanche. Big brain plays. And now we can drop our Volibear. So our Babbling Bjerg is now Titanic. All right, so we could drop him right away, but actually we do have the attack token next round so sure let's drop him for free then let's drop our mega t we are going to be losing out on one of them all right so we could attack but yeah they do actually have a decent amount of blockers so this would kill one of their units we would take all of our mana let's drop an invocation Alright, that looks good. Uh, let's... Oof, that is... That is rough. But it's still not enough to kill us, but it will let them heal up. Uh, they could kill the Mega T. But let's just go for as much damage as possible. All right, so we can go for massive mega tees. We strike now. All right, GG. Oh. Why'd you get the attack token? Uh, we have domination, so round start rally. Yeah, six star Volley Bear is really good. <laughs> Uh, double attack is fun. This is also another thing, the battering ram. You would think like, oh, this is a terrible card for Volibear. But because that, he, because this is Titanic, you get the sigil buff before it gets the strike off. And so this actually does do well. Because as long as you get a sub, couple sigils for this, it still hits pretty hard. So I think we'll actually grab this here. We're just getting so many Titanics, but it's fine. And yeah, let's get rid of the Thorny Toad. We don't really want to play with that. Oh, I love it when the Fire Spitter just gets a couple extra stats. Flash Freeze will potentially grab. Trosty is not terrible for getting a couple kills. Let's actually leave and see. So there's Kingpin or Champion Item. So we don't need our gold for anywhere else. Okay, Stabilize. Let's just get a couple more strikes off. Not terrible. And yeah, let's get one copy of Flash Freeze. And let's go for champion item. So swift wing. This should give us tons of units to hit. This should be great. Mini tees. Those look like mega tees. Uh, yes, they are mega tees. The things they make though are mini mini tees. Avalanche could actually be really good here. Let's get rid of both of these. Double crown guard. Sad. We were hoping that they would drop some units to die to the avalanche. I still think we'll drop it here. For one, it damages our reavers. So yeah, this will be fine. We're actually using the fourth star. It can be useful. Uh, we could go for more rallies, but I think we'll wait until... We actually get Volibear going. All 
All right, so let's drop him here. And yeah, having the extra copies for another strike is pretty good. All right, so this one here is set to zero, so we don't want to play it with the sigils. This one here, though, is not set to zero. So we can drop this. All right, that's fine. And yeah, now some of our other units are starting to hit Titanic. Uh, let's, yeah, drop this here. Yeah, the fact that it's releasing the unit isn't necessarily the best, but we can go ahead and attack and then just rally a bunch of times. Honestly, playing with these Titanic units is so fun. Uh, GG. Can anyone explain to me why this game is not popular on Twitch? Does anyone have any idea? Um, we don't have that many people streaming it, especially people that actually have like an audience. I don't think this is necessarily the best game to try to grow your your Twitch channel generally. So yeah, we don't really have that many people streaming it, to be honest. And then I think a lot of people left the game with the PvP. And yeah, some people only like to watch PvP, they don't care about watching Path of Champions. So PvP or PvE isn't always the best uh, on stream. All right, Avalanche, Death's Grasp. Not terrible. Killing one of your units to potentially kill an enemy. Also having sigils. This could generate like six sigils for us. So three costs, but yeah, I think that could be pretty good. All right, let's go for a champion item. Um, I think let's go for more stats for Maokai. Right now, I think we're having an issue where sometimes he gets his first strike off with the Reckoners, but then that reduces him down below the Titanic threshold so he doesn't get his second strike off because his Titanic is tied to his health. So I think we'll go for Phage so that he's going to have the eight power. So regardless of when he gets hit, he's still going to get that second strike off. So let's go there. Uh, let's grab a healer. Yeah, we have a lot of these that we can cut. I think we'll actually get rid of the tribalist. While it is actually solid now, <laughs> this used to be kind of a bad card for you, but it's pretty good now. We have other better Titanic units. Let's go for Viego. No in this world can stop me. All right, let's get rid of a couple of these. But nice. Crown Guard, Volley Bear, and our Maokai. Alright, let's drop this here. We want to be able to get multiple strikes off. Alright, so let's drop our Maokai. Pretty good. Alright, turn one uh, Volley Bear. They have one mana left. Are they going to have anything to stand up to us? Doesn't look like it. Uh, this is already set to zero cost, but yeah, kind of doesn't matter. So we will attack like this and we can drop a crown guard if we need it. But we don't. GG. Is the note that gives both regen and tough to Titanic followers working? I don't have it yet. Yes, it is. Well, it's not technically Titanic. It's units that cost six or more. So as here, unit cost six or more. Uh, it has it. Scar Mother has it. Mega T. So yeah, it is working. All right, Volley Bear is really good. His six star actually plays much better than you see when you, when you, that you think when you just see it. It's actually really, really good works well on your units it triggers in pretty much the best possible way giving you the buffs before your units get like their strike off 
works for ephemeral units, work for anything you summon. It's actually really, really strong. Volley Bear, tons of removal, good control. For most challenges, he is more than strong enough to deal with it. I think there are going to be some champions that just can end games faster. Now, Volley Bear actually does end pretty fast, but there's still going to be ones like potentially Jinx or uh, Gwen, potentially Swain, others that just are still a little bit stronger than him. So while I think Volley Bear is very, very strong, I think other ones would be a little bit, a little bit better. Let's see if I can pull up this here. All right, so for where I think you'd go in the constellation, I think for now, I'm going to put him in the top of B. Now, this is all very subject to change as we test out a bunch of the other champions. I think he's actually very good. I think he is still going to get outshone or outclassed by some others. And I think there's other champions that still will get more power than a six star. But he was one of the ones that I think most people thought was kind of a garbage six star. You didn't get a lot of use out of it. Wasn't worth getting. I think it's actually pretty good. And it also just makes him really, really fun. It improves the fun of the champion more than I think many other six stars. So yeah, I think we'll put him in B for now. This will be subject to change based on the ratings of all the other champions, but I think top of B tier will be pretty good for him. He's potentially going to drop. That's that's possible. Uh, do you like him or Ash better being that you have both? I like him. I think he's way more fun than Ash. I think Ash's six star is fun, but the Volley Bear one is so much more enjoyable in my opinion. Like just constantly dropping giant units is really good. Is this tier list going to account for relics? We're factoring in for this tier list with a six star that the champions are fully maxed out other than gemstones and that... Or at least level 30. I don't know if we're really counting everyone level 50, but yeah, probably not factoring that amount, but they're at least level 30, all relics, all rare relics, and then everything in the constellation other than gemstones. I wouldn't, I don't think I'd say that Ash's six star is way stronger, although I think, I think heroic, you're the one that <laughs> you really, really like Ash. Uh, Ash's six star is good. It can be a bit inconsistent. Depending on what you're going against, you can end turn two, but consistently ending turn two, I haven't noticed that that's the case. But it can be really good, yes. And the one good thing about it is the stronger your enemy is, the stronger you can get. But I think it can struggle a bit with consistency. So she is, she's definitely good, but I wouldn't say that she's like way better than... Volley Bear. She might still be better than Volley Bear. I just don't think it's by that much. Ambassador's abilities got revealed for League. Interesting. All right. So next up, let's go for uh, Gwen. So she's one that I've only really played like once. I think she might go up in the S tier potentially. I think she is pretty crazy. Uh, let's go around. Or let's change this. All right, so for Gwen, we have everything but the, the gemstone upgrades. Her six star game starts summon four ghastly bands and rally, so always getting the attack token. This doesn't matter quite as much for a lot of the deadly modifiers because you already start with the attack token, but it's nice that regardless of what content you're going into, you always get the attack token. Now, while this is summoning four, you still have your three star that's also summoning one of these at the start, so technically you get five ghastly bands around one. So this is really helping you scale up your uh, hallowed stacks. And then this also opens up the use of Disciple of Shadows. You can drop Gwen turn one, 
This is also counting as damage, so you immediately level her. So you get a leveled Gwen turn one with the attack token every single round. You can then try to go for Gale Force, get two attacks off. Getting back to back attacks with Gwen is very, very strong since you can stack up your Hallowed to be even more powerful. That's also very good for your level up because its damage is based on your power. And then going for Ludens doubles that damage. So as long as your Gwen does not get shut down turn one, I feel like for most of the content in the game, she can just end turn one, which is pretty crazy. So we are going to grab her here and test her out because we haven't tested her out much. And I think she's really a champion that is going to be crazy, crazy strong. Uh, it's the official reveal of Mbessa on League Twitter. Mbessa's coming to League. Kind of not th that interested in the, the League one. We'll maybe look at that later. Let's hop in and try our Gwen. Again, we'll just go up against the uh, Viego Nightmare. All right, let's see what we get for a power here. Uh, Woosh, summon a Disciple. Another unit that's just going to die right away. Not really going to benefit us much. Bouncing Blades. Also not really going to matter for us. We're trying to think of anything that's just giving us more damage game one. Let's do a reroll here. Game start draw two. Not bad to make sure we have a higher chance of getting our Gwen. Reducing enemies attack would also be fine, but I think let's just... Grab flexible game plan. Let's go for Spiderling. Let's give it up a Chronicler. Let's get a glimpse. The good thing is, since Gwen is going to be <laughs> free, we can actually spend some mana on other things. Although. The one issue with that is sometimes having a completely full board can screw with the Disciple of Shadows. So I think we will still drop her here. Are we going to get the reveals today? I doubt we're getting the reveals for um, our game, Path of Champions. But we'll see. Alright, so they are out of mana. Let's drop our... Actually, let's get our scout attack off. Let's drop this here. Alright. Yep. GG. Just turn one. Ugh. Uh, we can go for a sapling. Getting more items on that's not bad. Let's go for a support champion. Misfortune with double double attack. I really hope they change that. Uh, Crackshot Corsair. Not terrible. I think we're potentially still going to go for... Misfortune, although it is kind of funny going for Viego. Yeah, I don't really plan on playing any of these. If we go for Viego, we're going to get more Shadow Isles cards, though. Yeah, sure. Best use of Wild Fragments. Now I got every champion to three stars. Uh, normally, that's when you want to just be looking at... Trying to spend the least amount of fragments to get champions to like four and five stars. So anyone that you kind of high roll and get a couple champions here or there, or get some fragments from them here or there, using your wild fragments to just finish them off for the four and five star bonuses, or just any of the star discoveries as well. Here we want the champion item, but I think we'll go for bright steel. Well, eh, misrate's fine. All right, let's re-roll pretty much everything. We just need to get our Gwen. 
All right, didn't get our Gwen. Feels bad. Uh, let's... I think go for a Phantom Butler, potentially. Although we could have actually used that for all of our ghastly bands. Alright, so no Gwen, but we still have a ton of Hallowed Stacks now. Alright, so we do have multiple fearsome units. That is a little bit sad. Oh well. Alright, so we're going for Conductor. And then here we will... Oh, we don't have quite enough yet. Uh, also looks like add drops. So we'll just pause and wait for a moment. We know that for League, we'll have two Arcane patches and the Arcane rework on December-ish after the season ends. Yeah, I'm hoping that December for us, we're kind of done with Arcane, but we'll have to see. Probably go for the, the Soldier. Alright, seven hallow deaths, not too bad. What do you think of a tier list that ranks the total amount of shards needed for a champion to be nightmare viable? Could be interesting to see which champs are low investment versus high investment. Yeah, potentially. What champions get like really big breakpoints? Yeah, that could be interesting. All right, everyone should be back. I think let's go ahead and drop our soldier. All right, let's just drop that one here. And yeah, not quite being able to end. Ah, oh, sad. Yeah, one issue not drawing our champion. Yeah, we need these units to be slightly stronger to block the fearsome. Oh, they didn't attack with their fearsome unit. All right. So this is a free attack. Which is pretty big. Uh, double attack, Viego. I think let's actually drop this here and... Often they don't block three attacks. They did not. Alrighty. Let's spread out our power. Drag these two over here. And GG. Uh, Mac roll, Mac roll. Uh, thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. Yeah, after our best, we're gonna have four Noxus champions because she's most likely Noxus, which will be a little much. I'm excited for the final season of Arcane. We'll probably wait till November 23rd to watch it, so it's not three episodes at a time. Yeah, I'm probably going to watch it as soon as it comes out because I know that otherwise I'm going to get immediately spoiled by chat or internet or anything. I think we'll go here for a cheap unit. We should be fine with the sustain. All right, let's get more copies of our Gwen. Uh, Fury, four power. Let's go for spell shield, actually. 
Others are fine, but just making sure she can't get like frostbitten, stunned, anything like that is going to be pretty important. Chamber, so we could have gotten actually spell shield there, uh, but it's fine. We'll go for the shop. All players have a single combat. Yeah, we can go for a remitter. I want to wait, but the odds are I won't. <laughs> uh, let's get rid of... Actually, let's hold on to Boisterous. All right, let's drop our Gwen. Get our level up going immediately. Alright, let's go for sapling for more items. Another sapling for more items. Go ahead and get our scout attack off. Drop this here for a little bit more damage, even though it's probably not needed. And GG. So yeah, if you draw Gwen, it's just game over. Toast against the new adventure. Wow, and Bessa's really cool. Chat, do you know she dies? Episode 4, minute 13? Yeah. Not gonna lie, if I was a streamer, I'd ban all the spoiler droppers. At least time them out. I mean, yes, but by that time, the damage is done. But if someone did intentionally come in just to spoil things, yeah, I'd be like, okay. you're Especially if it's someone that's not normally in chat. It's like, you're just being an asshole. You're gone. <laughs> Think we're getting a Jinx encounter? Um, they're doing something special. The devs wouldn't say what is happening in next patch, but it seems like it's going to be something different than normal. So I don't know if it's just a different type of adventure or adventure with, yeah, who knows? But it should be different than what we normally normally get. So should be something special for Arcane. All right, so this would cost, this would be free. We already have Atrocity. Getting another item on is not terrible. Do we care about free spear? Do we need the extra damage? Probably not. Sure, getting Atrocity is not bad. We already have Spell Shield, so we don't really need Chamber. Uh, let's go for the shop. Summon a unit, give it Fury. Not really that big of a deal, but maybe just if we get the uh, evolution could be good. All right, let's go for a healer. I think let's potentially cut the Undying and let's go for Fiora. I would cut down the opposition. Crazy thing is a whole arcane adventure saga. Whatever it's called, you choose nightmares or normal. Dragon Rage works on Gwen with Disciple Shadows. Yeah, that could be that could be pretty fun. A lot of these are pretty good, but let's still re-roll pretty much everything. We want to make sure we get Gwen. Okay, nice. So yeah, we'll drop her here. Alright, that was lies. Dragon Rage did not increase her stats at all. So, <laughs> yeah, that's that's not the case. Uh, let's go for Sapling for more items. Go for another unit. And once again, turn one GG. Rage is dependent on the order. From War of Attrition to go fast. I mean, we were ending a lot of those Volibear games turn one as well. Or if you're talking about from like the last match. Uh, we already have Scout. We already cost nothing. Let's go for Phage for more stats. All right, power here. Uh, game start draw two. Don't we already have that? 
Yeah, we already have game start draw two. Don't really want to overdraw. Let's try to get something a little bit better here. Filling up our board to six isn't the best. I think we'll go for Enfeebling just in case they drop like a giant unit that Gwen can't kill in her first attack. This way with her quick attack, she'll get a hit off and then whatever power they have left won't be enough to kill her. But still, we're not really getting good items here. All right, let's go for Honored Lord. So Stalker. All right, let's get rid of pretty much all of these. We'll actually hold on to the Butler. We want to have another unit to play with our Gwen turn one. Just because it gives us a lot of extra damage. All right, let's again try this. Yep, still not really any different. Get our scout attack off. All right, let's go like this. And then let's kill that. Ooh, still not having quite enough. That is rough, because this should die. Huh. Yeah, actually not ending turn one. Well, she's going to get recalled. All right, we have our atrocity. It is just going to be a little bit uh, expensive. Can drop our soldier. Yeah, I guess. Oof, that's going to be a little annoying. Yeah, the amount of sustain is pretty crazy. All right, all right, let's go ahead and drop our Gwen. Good thing is we do have even more stacks of Hallowed now. So GG. Can you, can, you make, can you make a tier list of all the champions at six stars? We are already working on that. That's, yeah, currently what we're doing. I think we'll grab this and then we'll potentially cut it. Like the free attack is nice, but also just reducing our cards is nice as well. Uh, more power, solid. Yes. Now let's go for the shop. That's not really going to help us. Let's leave and see. All right, we're going to go for the champion item. We'd like to get Farsight if we can. Try to get something useful here. Okay, that can be useful. And let's go here for Soldier. This is okay. We have our Gwen. We have our sapling toss, got some good one costs. Yeah, this is pretty good. I will say Gwen is a little bit more of one of those champions that if you don't draw her and if you don't end turn one, you are going to be potentially a little bit weak off because if we don't end in the first turn, then we don't have any units because Gwen's getting recalled and all of our other units are gone. Now we do make a unit every round so that does help. It is a lot of damage though, so most things can't survive. GG. Gwen is very feast of famine. A bit. Yeah, running four star Gwen to Viego right now is kind of rough. I 
I think we'll go for Reckoner's Mark. Sure. All right, Overwhelm, Challenger, Barrier. Barriers shouldn't really matter because we have Spell Shield and we have Enfeebling. Challenger could be okay. We'd like to get Farsight, though. Cost reduction is not really going to help us. Cost increase won't really matter because we're already getting five cost reduction. So one more shouldn't be bad. Giving us more stats, though, is decent. I think let's go ahead and cut the Hydra Vine and then go for Viego. No fire in this world can stop me. All right, double Gwen. Uh, let's give it a glimpse. I think we will actually hold on to double Gwen just in case they somehow survive the first round. So yeah, let's drop our Gwen. The fact we can level her immediately is pretty great. And get all those hallowed right away. All right, let's go for double sapling. What a joy. Already over half their health. All right, GG. All right, Gwen is very good. If you draw her, you're going to be able to end almost every fight turn one. So that's obviously crazy. You have a ton of sustain. If you don't draw your Gwen, you're still getting, for one, a bunch of units immediately on the board. You're always starting with the attack token. While that's not going to be as useful into the nightmares since you normally get that anyways, it's still nice, especially if you ever use her in any other content, although all that content would be... It'd be so overkill bringing a six-star Gwen into it. At least you're getting your Hallowed stacks right away. So the six-star makes it kind of less reliant on Gwen just because you're still getting so many Hallowed stacks right away. So you're still able to put out a lot of damage. You have that Overwhelm. And your support champion has double attack, so that is still good. But obviously, if you don't draw Gwen, you're going to have a lot more of a difficulty. And then Gwen, if you don't end turn one, then... You kind of don't have a board left. You're getting your ephemeral unit every round. I think she is very strong, but I do think she does have some drawbacks that make her a little bit worse than some of the other super strong champions. I feel like some of these are so hard to rank. Gwen, Vayne, and Lily are also similar. I think for Gwen, what I'm feeling like is putting her right now at like the bottom of S tier. I think... Oh, my word. It's grabbing the wrong thing. Whatever. Uh, so, yeah, with her, I think bottom of S will be solid. I think some other champions, even if they might not consistently end in the first turn, are set up for success better. So I think I still prefer, like... Viego or Swain because Viego and Swain you can end especially with Viego you can end turn one pretty reliably not quite as reliably as Gwen but it's still up there but even if you don't end turn one you're still going to be able to absolutely dominate the board the entire time and also even if you don't draw your champion you're still often in a better spot now yes getting your Viego on the board really really helpful as well same with Swain but I think I like both of them better. I think sticking Gwen in the bottom of S tier for now, though, and seeing how it shakes up with the other champions would be a pretty good spot. A tier, the champions in S are just stronger. Are we going to have, like, five champions better? Being able to end turn one is noteworthy, but I don't think it's a prerequisite for S. All 
I suppose we can put her in the top of A then for now. Because, yeah, these champions, they are going to move around because they are going to get pushed around by other champions. I think she's going to be in this range, though. The fact that she can end turn one more consistently than probably most champions. Like, she has, she's putting out more damage than Jinx. Like, Jinx has the added bonus of doing the removal. But Gwen is doing way more damage than Jinx. She's doing almost more damage than most champions. I think Vayne is probably going to be in a fairly similar boat where it's like tons of damage turn one. But if you don't draw your champion, you're kind of having a rougher time. Yeah, there's definitely champions better than her. But yeah, her actual ranking, I would be very surprised if she's not A tier. But she could get... Yeah, she could have got pushed out of S. We'll see, though. We'll see how champions uh, rank up. But I think this is decent for now. But yeah, subject subject to change as we are testing everyone out. Yeah, she is definitely very good. Swain, Aesol, Diego, Misfortune, Vex. Uh, we're not going to rank Aesol. At least I wasn't planning on it, because he's not an... A uh, six star champion. So, yeah, Aesol's not going to be on there, at least not playing on that at the moment. Uh, Swain Viego will probably be there. I don't know if Misfortune is going to be higher than her. Like, Misfortune's really good, but Misfortune's very similar to Gwen, where you have to have her, and her main positive side is that she's ending turn one but i feel like gwen is pretty much in the exact same boat as misfortune vex has a lot of control and removal so vex is potentially up there fiddle is maybe fiddle is 100 in s fighting for top three I would say top five. I'm not sure about top three. Misfortune is less reliant than Gwen. Yeah, I would say especially... Yeah, with her shock and awe build. Yeah, going for just one drops, you are able to do more damage. You're not as reliant on drawing your champion. Yeah, that is true. You can still do more damage with your general units than Gwen can. So yeah, Misfortune is higher than is higher than Gwen. Still needed, but not as much. Yeah, I would I would say that's true. We're considering champ and the build. So we're trying to pick the best build for the champ, and we're trying to pick. Well, we're considering them with, yeah, everything maxed out other than the gemstones, which won't matter as much. And I think this is probably, like, the best build for Gwen for just being able to end turn one. It's just going for as much damage as possible for the very first turn, and so you can just absolutely annihilate the enemy. All right, I think that's where we'll call it for today. The next couple days, though, we're going to be continuing this. We're going to be looking at some of the champions that I got to six stars but haven't played as much. And, I mean, we might just do all of my six-star champions. So we have all of them tested out and kind of putting them on the tier list. Now, they are very subject to change on the tier list when we actually do the full thing. But, yeah, that's what we're going to be doing the next couple of days. Uh, so, yeah, thank you for... Uh, stick it around. Hopefully see you yeah, the next, next couple days for all of these rankings. But hope you all have a great day and hopefully see you tomorrow. See ya.